Hello there, I'm your host, Dan Rojas. It's been a while since we've uploaded a video on YouTube, so I figured what better way to make a comeback than to do a video about something that started our channel in the first place. Fresnel lenses. I have three Fresnel lenses here. These are ones that we made. They are roughly 13 inches by 21 inches, and they are crystal clear spot lenses. They have a short focal length of 18 inches. This video, I'm going to be covering some of the myths that people have regarding Fresnel lenses and showing you why some of those ideas that people email me don't work. The first myth regards stacking mini lenses together, thinking that you're going to keep amplifying the sunlight and making a super powered laser. Fresnel lenses do not amplify sunlight. Parabolic mirrors do not amplify sunlight. Even the big glass ball thing that people are trying to do does not amplify sunlight. What they do is concentrate sunlight. So it takes the area of sun that the lens is and concentrates it down into a small focal point. This is the way that it works. So the larger the lens, the more power you get. The clearer the lens, the more light that's allowed to go through, the more light transmission, and that also has to do with the power. But the size, that is the overall power rating of a lens. So this is going to be a single Fresnel lens all by itself. It's going to have kind of a little funky focal point because it's not mounted to a frame. And you're going to notice that I'm roughly 18 inches away from the target at the optimal focal point. If I take two lenses, put one atop the other like this, at the same distance you get nothing. So you have to go all the way into about there, pretty much cutting the focal length in half to get the light to concentrate into one spot. Now that does make a smaller focal point, but it doesn't really help you much because as we stack these together, there's less light coming through. Each one absorbs a little bit more light. There's no way to have a Fresnel lens or parabolic mirror give 100% efficiency, so each one is absorbing some light. When you put three together, that focal length that was cut in half before is cut in half again. So you have to go like right there can't even see what the hell I'm doing. You have to go right about there to get it to do anything. And while it is a much smaller focal point, it does not give you more power. In a previous video, we covered this using a very large Fresnel lens and a piece of optical glass. The optical glass did make the focal point a lot smaller, but the light that the lens absorbed and reflected close to the optimal focal point of the Fresnel lens reduced the power dramatically. Another common myth that people have about Fresnel lenses is to rang a bunch of them together. If this lens were to be cut into four pieces, you would have four pieces of a Fresnel lens and you could array that together because the rings are all going to be quarter sections. They're all going to go to a common focal point. When you take one lens like this and a second lens and attempt to get them to go in the same spot, it doesn't matter how you turn the lenses, which direction you turn them, how you shape them, they're both gonna have two completely different focal points. No matter how I turn them, the light will not go in a curved direction. The light will always go in a straight line for the most part. We've shown you this in other videos and I've shown you ways of using mirrors to redirect them through a Fresnel lens. Parabolic mirrors with a really long focal length can be arrayed together because they are reflecting sunlight. Another common misconception is that if you were to take the lens and bend it like this, you would be able to have sunlight. You would never need to track the sun. You still have one focal point. The only thing that this does is it distorts the focal point instead of it being a nice tight focal point it goes into something goofy and it actually it'll change it so you can't bend it but it's not going to help you track the Sun throughout the day this always has to face the Sun final myth or misconception regarding Fresnel lenses is that the rate of combustion how quickly it catches something on fire determines its power it has nothing to do with it it's kind of like an oven versus a lighter or a small blowtorch the oven would have a lot more power to cook something large. The same is true for a lens like this. If I focus this giant linear Fresnel lens, has a linear beam that's not the best, it's fogged up, it's kind of like the ones you get out of most TVs nowadays. It takes a while for the focal point to actually get the wood to start smoking. 
If I focus a small one on there, it does it almost instantly. If I was in a survivalist situation where I had to choose between one of these two for cooking, I would pick this one. Because even though it doesn't catch stuff on fire right away, it has more power. Now, the power of a lens is a little bit tricky to consider because the clarity has a lot to do with it. If this were a crystal clear spot for no lens, obviously it would have a lot more power than this doll would. But side by side, this lens, one, two, has probably five to six times the area of this lens. So it's gonna collect five to six times the sunlight. It's putting it over a wider area. So if you're cooking something, say, in a frying pan, a larger lens like this is gonna help. This lens will not do it. I've seen people try to take small lenses like this or small page magnifiers that are eight by 10 inches and they try to cook something on a pan that's 10 inches in diameter. You're not adding any additional sunlight. You're just creating a shadow. You notice the whole area is shadowed around in the focal point. So you're robbing from one area to put it to another. So the larger the lens, the more power you're gonna get. And if you're concerned about, well, it doesn't catch stuff on fire right away, that's not usually the goal. You wanna heat stuff. You wanna use it as a solar device. So larger is better, clearer is better. They kinda of have a trade-off. This one can cook on about a six inch frying pan. With the focal point set to about there. That will get the frying pan, a small one, up to roughly 300 degrees Fahrenheit. This larger one can probably do the same thing on an eight to 10 inch pan. It's gonna take a little bit longer to get your temperatures to start to build, but in the long run, this is more like an oven. This is more like a blowtorch. So since larger is better and lens clarity matters, a lens like this would be a really good one to use. It's not the clearest lenses that we have, but it is one of the larger lenses. It's pretty damn big. It's can definitely, I should have this framed by the way, but you notice how long the focal length is. With Fresnel lenses, if you find one and it's got scuff marks and scratches, don't be worried about it. Per, I've got many perfect lenses and I'm saving them. I don't like to use them because they scratch up pretty easily. But a lens like this is great for most outdoor projects. Even though it's got a lot of imperfections, it doesn't really affect the solar performance much. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.